Welcome to RPV City Talk. RPV City Talk is brought to you by the City of Rancho Palos Verdes to inform the community on recent city matters. RPV City Talk is a weekly show that features the RPV Mayor, City Council, or City Employees. Hi everyone, I'm Liz Brown Swanson and welcome to a special edition of RPV City Talk. This is our year in review where we're going to look back at all that happened in the city in 2015. And joining me now to re reflect back on the year is the Mayor of Rancho Palos Verdes, Jim Knight. Mayor Knight, always great to have you in studio. and. I just want to thank you because you have been coming to the studio month after month and informing all of our wonderful residents about what's happening in the city and city council matters. And I also want to say an extra big thank you for just all you've done for our community. Um, you've served the last four years on the council, eight years before that on planning commission, so devoted to the community. And I know your term ends December 1. You'll be stepping down mm -hmm. from the post. So just want to say how grateful we are that you've taking more time out to be here with us in the studio and tell us about everything happening. Well, thank you, Liz. And I've, it's always been a pleasure to be interviewed by you. You're very knowledgeable of the community and you have some great questions. And uh, it's always a pleasure to be doing these interviews with you. So how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing fine. I'm a little disappointed in the election, of course. I, I had a lot of uh, future plans I had for the city uh, that I wanted to bring forth. I've been working on them the past four years, wanting to come to fruition. But uh, I understand how democracy works, and the voters have spoken. They want someone else to represent them, and that's, uh, that's the way it is. Well, hopefully you're not going too far. You have still a lot to offer, and you're my neighbor down the street, so uh, really, I think you're still going to be around. <laughs> and I know you said you have lots of groups coming at you right now that want your time, because you are, you, mm -hmm. you, when you do things, you, you, you're so very focused, and we appreciate that. Um, so moving on, let's take a look at the big year. I, I'm just curious if you could just have one word um, to describe, you know, your year as mayor, what would it be? Well, I don't know. I, I guess the, the word privilege comes to, 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 to mind. It's, it's been an honor and a privilege to be in a place where people have elected me in the past four years to represent them and be their mayor this year and uh, to bring forth what I think are some improvements to the quality of life for our city. So do you feel overall RPV is in good shape? I think it's in good shape. I definitely do. Uh, we're financially sound. Um, we we have all of our, uh, our, our our employees at the city hall. We have some good people working there, and uh, we you know have. I mean, if you look out in front of your homes, there's no potholes, and your streets are paved. Uh, those are the kind of things people look at. Uh, so the city's in good shape. We're going forward. We have some challenges ahead of us, but I think we're in good place to, to meet those challenges. Yeah, for me, one word that comes to mind for 2015 has been change. We've seen a lot of changes, especially at City Hall. Mm -hmm. We have a new city manager, a new deputy city manager, a new finance director, a new city attorney. I mean, the list actually continues. Um, and so with all those changes, I'm just wondering sort of what do you see? How does that impact how business is done in the community? What does that really mean for the residents? Well, it means for the residents, basically, we, first, first of all, we've put together, I think, a good team. It's, it's, I've been working with them since they've been on board, and I think a very good team. What it means is going to be a continuation of good services to the community. We're trying to become more transparent and, uh, in the sense that we're trying to uh, allow the community to be more involved in what goes on in the city, basically through a website and responding to concerns with the city for the, from the city manager and the other departments. So I think it's going to be good. I think it's, it just means the residents will be continue to be served well in the city. Okay. Um, as we move forward, I'm thinking about, you know, the city has done a lot. Um, if you just watch any council meeting, they're at least usually four hours, and you, you, handle, you handle a lot of business. But if you had to, to focus on, I picked three top accomplishments, um, what do you see as kind of listing them one by one? Well, um, I think one of the greatest accomplishments we had this year is we finished the San Ramon drainage project. That was a huge project. A lot of funds came out of our, uh, of our general fund uh, and our reserves to, to, to get that project together. Um, that was a major accomplishment for us to get that finally finished. Uh, we've been dealing with public safety issues. Um, we've had uh, uh, some issues with some burglaries in the neighborhood and we hopped on that with some additional sheriff patrols some more cameras around the city, and uh, we also been working strong to get a, a public outreach of educational to, to, the, uh, to the residents so that they know how to prevent crime and, mm -hmm. and understand how to even be, keep watch over their own neighborhoods better. Uh, the other big thing we're, we are working forward on and have engaged in is the infrastructure of the city. We're trying to take a look, a long-term look at our infrastructure 
and organize it in such a way that we can properly prioritize the projects such that we're dealing with the public safety first and all those other projects that are really important for the, uh, the infrastructure to, to be maintained in a fashion that it costs less to actually maintain it down the future if you, if you don't let it get so deteriorated. So we're, we're addressing those, those three major things. Right. As far as, um, you know, those were your sort of three major accomplishments in those areas, but in terms of just issues, that just sort of challenging issues that you felt the council had to face and maybe they're not resolved yet throughout the year, like what comes to mind? Well, one of the things we have dealt with is the impact of social media. Uh, we've been a quiet little community for many, many years, enjoying our open space, our lovely coastline, and our trails, and so on. Um, and now we've been discovered. We're LA's playground. <laughs> yes, all the uh, deficient, uh, park deficient areas in the central Los Angeles, all around Los Angeles on the South Bay have discovered that there's, we have a wonderful uh, network of trails, open space, and beautiful coastline. And it's fine to share it with them, but it's, it's, the influx has impacted some of our neighbors. So we, we have dealt with some uh, parking uh, regulations up in Del Cerro area mm -hmm. to, to try to address not only some safety issues, but all the impact to, to the residents up there. Um, Abalone Cove, we had a couple of drownings there. We haven't had that in years. Um, with social media, these kids get on and they say, oh, it's fun to jump off this cliff in front of this cave. And we've had some unfortunate accidents as a result of that. So we formed a task force with the sheriffs and the lifeguards in the city to, to actually monitor that and close it down when the, when the conditions are not safe and so on. Um, so we've, we've dealt with a lot of issues out here. We, we have Green Hills, which is kind of on the horizon, and that's been a very difficult issue for the city. It's in a very unfortunate situation. Uh, and so we're, we're, we're trying to deal with that um, and, and find an equi equitable solution to that. So basically, and a little bit of an uptick in burglaries, as I mentioned before, and so we've been addressing that as well. So those are some of the issues we've been working on. Some of, of the many issues. Mm -hmm. and, and you're pleased with the progress, though, overall that the city's making in the direction that... Yes, yes. I mean, there's always things we can improve on, you know, at any point. But I think we've made some good decisions. The council has made some good decisions move forward with some programs that really are, are, are trying to maintain the quality of life we have in our city. Right. And sometimes you've got to be careful what you wish for. Sometimes we all want to be popular, but not so popular. <laughs> and then, of course, you have so many things that are attracting people to come. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, you want people to come to Terranea. You want people, you know, to come to Trump and, and, and shop here and, and all mm -hmm. that. But, you know, with that comes, there's a lot more pressure on all the services and mm -hmm. we have all things to, so it's that it's balancing true. act. Right. Um, in terms of where the city spends their money, is it where, where do, what do we spend most of our money on in this year in particular? I mean, well, what costs basic, us the most? Yeah, I mean, basically the largest contract we have, we have is with the sheriff's department. Okay. That's, that's probably the largest chunk we have that we spend. Uh, in, in, in the past years, as I mentioned, the San Ramon project was a huge amount of expense for the city, although the, the state uh, contributed half of that, that, that uh, funding, but that was over $9 million. That's a huge amount we spent out of our general fund. So those are the, kind of the two major areas that uh, t take a uh, hit on our, our budget. Right, and I think the community, though, that's what, really what we're, we're concerned about, right, is our safety. So you're spending it where it needs to be spent. Exactly. That's and, the whole point. And on yeah. that note, um, one thing that was the extra expense in this past budget was the designated funds to have two RPV, you know, the patrol cars are in our city, only mm -hmm. in our city, two of them. And I think it was a 250 thousand dollar price tag per vehicle mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that will be like evaluated because you know we don't really know what does this mean we, we assume it's going to help curtail crime and pre prevent crime but when will we know that i mean do you have any idea well um that is th that is a, a way of we we have to monitor the police uh, the performance review of what what's happening mm -hmm. with that in terms of the, the burglaries and and the crime and so on in the community they're kind of up against a hard situation now with the sheriffs. Um, the Prop 47 uh, has allowed a lot of um, drug dealing and so on to become a misdemeanor. And I've talked to Captain Bolin, and he says it's very unfortunate because a lot of these people need to go into treatment program and, and you know, help them out. But all they can do is just file for misdemeanor, let them go. And, they, and the people know that. 
Mm -hmm. And so they have to maintain their habit, and so it, it, it kind of is a, a difficult spot for the sheriffs to deal with some of these issues. Mm -hmm. And also looking in terms of just keeping our, our community safe between Neighborhood Watch and all of the different outlets we have, there's also been focus on also um, safety in the preserve that's been discussed mm -hmm. a lot. Are, are you concerned about, you know, trying to, um, what needs to be done in the preserve just to monitor what's happening there? I know that's being addressed by the council. Yes, um, we, we have a lot of abuse of the trails and uh, it's affecting the habitat. And I don't know if there's much safety issue but other than the fact that maybe there's some right. conflicting uses that maybe horses and bikes and you know, if it's like graffiti kids. or you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, okay, so, well, we, we, yeah. We, now the graffiti we have addressed with a program. We have a graffiti program that we put together that's um, a particular service we have. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have um, addressed that, and this, this company will come out within 24 hours and take care of that, that graffiti. Right. So what we're trying, we are, and that's part of the additional use of, of our uh, public spaces, that mm -hmm. we're getting a lot more influx from different uh, types right. of people from the communities, and so we're having to deal with that. You mentioned the graffiti service. My next question was just talk about some of the new services that might be being offered uh, to, to our residents, programs. You know? Well, the graffiti service is one, as I mentioned. Um, in addition to the actual company that comes out and takes care of the graffiti, we, they have an app that you can put on your phone. Right. And so if you happen to be hiking the trails or anywhere, if you're along any, any place in the city and you happen to notice some graffiti, you can have this app, take a picture of the graffiti, and have your GPS turned on, and the GPS coordinates will go back to the company, and they'll come out and they'll immediately take care of the graffiti and they'll show you the before and after pictures as a response to your, your complaint or yeah. your, your uh, observance of that. So that's something that's really using the high tech to, to, to keep on top of it. Uh, we have something else called OpenGov. We've been instigated into the city and what that does is it allows any resident to go into the website and completely look at our budget, what we're spending money on, where it's going, and they can create their own charts, how much is going toward public safety, how much is going toward this, that, or the other. And they can even see our books, what the checks are being made out to. I mean, there's a lot of information there that's completely transparent of what our budget is, where we're spending the money. And I think that'll help the residents understand the services the city's providing. And if they have any issues, then they can articulate what those issues are with more information. I think it's going right. to help a lot. Any other programs that you want to highlight? I mean, like, I, I don't know. We've got all kinds of things going on. I mean, just Rec and Parks alone. I mean, if you want to you do know, things Rec and like Parks that. Rec Parks has got a, a whole list right. of programs. I couldn't possibly go with the full list. And it's, <laughs> on, it's on the website. People can look right. at it. But we have all kinds of programs. And on that light, the website also has been redone and looks great. Mm -hmm. and, and there's been a lot of changes with IT and, and, and trying to just also just improve technology and all that and keep up to speed. Yes, our web, website's improved. It, it, it took a while to catch up because the old website had a lot of research material you can go into and get, get particular documents and so on. It's taken a while for that to catch up, but the, but the interface is really good with the website. And we're trying to include more links with outside organizations uh, um, if you have an issue with airplane noise. We now have a, a link that you can go to the web track and file a complaint or find out what's going on with the LAX airport. Uh, we have all kinds of links to the South Bay Energy Services Center, all kinds of things that are linking with other regional agencies that um, give our residents a broader expanse of the services available that they can take advantage of in mm -hmm. the region. And that website is rpvca.gov, by the That's way, right. people want to get on there. I want to talk more about your personal experience, you know, as you've been mayor and on the council and just sort of, just sort of maybe, first maybe share one of your fondest memories. We'll go there. <laughs> well, you know what I really... Uh, I, what I really love is when we go to some of the events that, people, that our city puts on, the Whale of a Day or Fourth of July, I love to see the faces of the kids when they see the booth with the live uh, um, birds and so on. Right. They're just awe-inspired. And I think how wonderful to let them see you know, these natural uh, animals and so on. I just love the look on their face and, and the awe they have. And in the PVIC, you know, their, their eyes are wide open with what we have displayed. I, those are the kind of things I, I love to see. The kids engaging and loving well, the natural environment and, and the city they live in. And I, right. that's, that's, that really gives me a great pleasure. How about uh, one of your funniest memories as mayor? Well, um, I guess the one that comes to mind was I was at a regional meeting that uh, was uh, addressing some of the parking restrictions we had placed in RPV and Del Cerro area. 
and there were some people there that were kind of upset that the city was um, uh, restricting public access and so on. And I happened to be talking to a citizen there at the time, and he got rather irate about how horrible the city was and, and taking these parking spaces away from other people or in other areas. It's a public space. and. He got so angry, and he said, uh, "Then the, the mayor should be ashamed of what he's done. They'd allow this to happen. They need to have public access. And so I just calmly told him, uh, you are speaking to the mayor. <laughs> and then you told him to take a hike. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, in well, RPV. If I told him to take a hike, it'd be, it'd yeah, be come, exactly. come hike in RPV. No, so, but, but yeah, actually, I, as, as I was talking to him, he, he kind of stood back and said, oh, my God, what have I said, you know? <laughs> But uh, it was fun, but I also explained to him the reasons we did it uh, for, for there's some public safety issues and packing the residents. And uh, once I explained the issues to him, I think he kind of uh, backed off a little bit and right. said, well, I understand now. Yeah. And of course, you know, you, you, are, you have those fun moments, but being mayor of the city is, is a serious job and, and it, you've put a lot of time into it. I mean, it's not just being at the council meetings, like you say, you're, you're on different committees and commissions. Did you enjoy doing that? Do you, do you, all those different meetings and uh, the different committees. Yeah, and, and all that. Yes, I did enjoy it. Um, uh, they are regional uh, boards that do affect the citizens of Rancho Palos Verdes in different ways. So, um, what I was a little bit frustrated was the way the boards were kind of all working in a silo, and so I was trying in, in the background trying to get a little more cohesion with them, mm -hmm. and 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 tell them, you know. T let me share with our residents what we're doing is pertinent to our residents. And um, there were some things we were doing that were pertinent to the residents, but I had to kind of articulate it and, and kind of c communicate it back to us. Mm -hmm. What accomplishments are, that stand out for you that you're proud of that you, know, that you did? Well, um, I mentioned the streetlight uh, inventory we did. Um, I, I thought that was something that save the citizens hundreds of thousands of dollars and forever takes these phantom lights that we're being charged for off of our books. But around that same theme is, is I constantly worked on trying to get our city to run more efficiently with the energy conservation uh, and, and consumption. And so in addition to street lights, uh, I was pushing hard to work with the consultants of South Bay Energy Services uh, um, Council to um, a center, excuse me, center to come to our city and help with our consultants to guide us as to how we can have more energy efficiency in the city with our light, uh, our, our timing and so on of our, our electrical consumption. And I think that that worked very well. We got into a gold status with uh, Southern California Edison, which not only reduced our energy consumption, but it actually lowered our per kilowatt hour rate that we're being charged. So there's additional savings there. So uh, it, it's, I think it was an environmentally sustainable thing to do for the city. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, it's also saving taxpayers money, you know, and right. making the city run a little more efficiently in that way. And speaking of uh, utilities and saving money, we were dealing with the drought all, you know, this past year mm -hmm. and those restrictions, and I think we were also just, we achieved that 36%, did you say that at the well, last That's right, council the last meetings? meeting I, I mentioned that um, uh, that's the highest standard set by the state is 36 percent and our residents achieved that in the month of September and I uh, a great uh, adulation for the residents and, right. and congratulations for them for for pitching in their part to all this uh, drought situation right. we're involved in. And of course we're getting ready for some rain we hope. They say El Nino yeah. is off the coast San uh, warm ready. water yeah and San Ramon is ready we'll thank see goodness what that's, that's there. there yeah. Well, you know, what you accomplished, but also what do you feel will be your legacy um, with your service on the council? I mean, your mark, if you... Well, I, I want to feel like what I try to bring to the table is what I call inclusiveness. Um, I, I, from the Planning Commission, I learned that it's really important to carefully listen to the issues, uh, get clarity on the issues, um, listen to your uh, fellow uh, either board uh, commission members or in this case the council members carefully and deliberate uh, respectfully and when you finally come to this decision you know explain your decision and let the residents know why you've come to that decision but it's an inclusiveness to try to uh, make sure the residents know that they're being heard mm -hmm. and uh, they, they we may not make a decision that they agree with but they're being heard and uh, so that's inclusiveness. The other thing I've, I've tried to create um, is what I call collaborative governance. 
What I mean by that is there's a lot of segments in our society, whether it's public or private, that are trying to make our community better. But quite often they work in silos, they work separately, and they're in parallel courses. And I feel one of, uh, one of the things I've been trying to do, and I've been successful at some points, is try to find a way to mesh and work with them together as a team, collaboratively, to, to improve the quality of life in our city. And uh, because quite often there's a lot of wasted effort going in separate, separate directions, mm -hmm. but if you can see how all these things are working together and you can form a kind of collaboration with that, that uh, you get a much greater result. For the good of the cause. And that would also um, ring, tr ring true with um, just that like, relationship between council and staff. Like mm -hmm. we've heard a lot about that this past mm -hmm. year about, you know, what is oversight? What is that relationship? How do you work together in a way that's appropriate? And you, you pleased with how that balance has been? Yes. Um, there have been some differences of opinion as to how much involvement council should have with the, with the staff and so on. But I have been working very hard to try to get us all to work as a team because that's where you're going to get the best results and the greatest results for our residents. Right. That's, um, you need to work as a team. You need to feel you're working as a team too. So there needs to be, a, a, you kind of need to create a culture of, of inclusiveness for that. Looking at 2016, what do you think is this city's biggest challenge? Um, I think going forward, we are we embarked, as I said, on the infrastructure. Uh, the biggest challenge, I think, will be taking a look at our infrastructure needs in long term, not just fixing things tomorrow and, and hopefully... Like the bumpy road. Right, yeah. The bumpy road. Uh, that's a big challenge is, is, is see how if we can try to work with some issues with landslide issues. Right. That's, a, that's a huge cha challenge. Uh, but uh, that's part of the infrastructure of, uh, of, of umbrella. But in terms of the infrastructure, taking all of our infrastructure needs in a long-term basis, prioritizing them, and then finding the challenge will be to, to find the funds to, to administer them. Uh, we do have a healthy reserve, which is good. It's a good start, but it may not be enough to completely take care of all the infrastructure needs. So we'll come to a, a crossroads where we, if we want to accelerate infrastructure needs, we may to go beyond the reserves and ask for other um, uh, funding opportunities, whether it's a storm drain user fee or something. Right, which that's a whole other subject. That's another that's subject, yeah. 2017 sunsets, and right. we're going to take a look at whether that's. future be. council will be addressing that. Uh, but the point being that uh, the other thing is to just take care of the immediate needs and um, just allow, as the uh, budget goes forward to take care of the other needs. That's a decision council will have to, will have to make. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's, that's going to be one of the greatest challenges, I think, down the road. What do you enjoy most about being part of Rancho Palos Verdes and living here in this beautiful place that we all get to enjoy? <laughs> well, it's a combination of things. I mean, I did move here because of the natural beauty and the school district. It's a great school district. Um, but I really, in, 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 in the uh, process of having moved here and met a lot of people, I just love the people that live here. I mean, they're just, just really neat people. They're really intelligent and fun and, and sometimes challenging. Right. But, but uh, really nice people, really good people live but, here. But where does that whole thing about serving the community and volunteering, where does that come from with you? I mean, you've been doing it for a long time here. Well, it's... Uh, I guess it's, it's because I want, I've moved here because the, I feel the quality of life is good and um, I want to make sure the quality of life remains good because I live here. Exactly. <laughs> but also, you know, I, it's, it's like, I guess what I would call Getting selfish it. sharing. There you go. <laughs> selfish sharing. I, I, but you I, encourage I, the residents to get involved in Yeah, volunteer. get involved, be involved and watch and monitor how the quality of life is in your community. And so... I got involved in saving the uh, land at City Hall site, right around where we are here now, um, because I, I've seen this happen before where people aren't watching, uh, monitoring what's going on, and some developer comes in and says, well, now we're going to have a golf course. You can't come here anymore unless you pay a $300 fee. Those kind of things. And I, and I just got involved just wanting to make sure that the beauty we have in, this, in the city remains and right. is preserved. In 40 plus years, I think, you know, we've got that open space and there's mm -hmm. just, you know, we've been able And now to we're the great that. envy of other, other cities that have infilled all of that, that mm -hmm. open space. I, I have been to some regional meetings where uh, people have referred to Palos Verdes as the open space portion of the greater South Bay region area, you know. 
Okay. Well, as we have to wrap it up on this edition of um, our PV City Talk, again, thank you for all your insights and sharing and what, what the council's been up to, your plans sort of moving forward, and, and anything you want to add before we wrap up? Well, um, I think in terms of me being uh, not on the council anymore, I'm, uh, my primary goal is going to be to spend more time with my family. Although I have been approached by other regional organizations to be part of their team, I think I'll just take a break in the moment and just spend some much needed time with the family. Okay, so as we wrap it up, I want to again thank you for all you've done for this community. I wish you and your family the best over the holidays, and I know I'll be seeing you around. And that's going to do it for this edition of RPV City Talk. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day.